The question, I have a few questions. Technically speaking or officially speaking, there are five swing states or are there seven swing states? I mean, it depends on how you characterize a swing state. Currently, a swing state is considered a state that has switched hands in the Trump era. So ones that he won in 2016 and then lost in 2020. Those are your typical identified swing states. But there are other states that can become swing states that might just be close. In other words, states that swing from one party to the other. That's the only definition. And, and which ones count depend on how you assess the probability of those states being competitive. There's a consensus, relatively speaking, that Georgia, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Nevada, Michigan, and Wisconsin are swing states. There's some people that would say Florida and North Carolina are swing states, that Republicans, that Trump could lose those. There are those on, on, the, on the more conservative side that say New Mexico, Minnesota, Maine, and New Hampshire are swing states because in either one of the last two elections, they've been close and might again be close. The only thing that excludes a swing state is a state that is consistently voted by double digits or more for one party or the other. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Alabama, Mississippi, Idaho, Wyoming, California, New York, New Jersey, these are not really realistically considered swing states in the Trump era. So that that's all it really means. OK, and now going into the election, I'm noticing only on predicted that the um, predicted electoral college difference is now like the most expected one is 65 or 64 to 105 or give or take. What I, There's got to be some mathematical calculation as to wh which is the most likely one based on the number of, um, uh, what's the word, electoral college, depending on the state, w which states are, in theory, up for grabs? I think the most, the broadest category would be those 10 states. So Florida, most people don't consider Florida competitive, but there's some on the Democratic side that do. Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Nevada, Arizona. On the conservative side, they would add to that Maine, New Hampshire, a few would even throw in New Mexico and Minnesota. So up to 12 states that could change hands from the last election. I'm looking at poly market for the popular vote. It's got Kamala Harris getting the popular vote at 66%. I mean, that is a um, not a sure bet, but that's a, you think there's no reasonable chance that Trump can get a popular vote victory in this election? Uh, no, I've already forecast that he will will actually win the popular vote. Uh, I mean, all the bookies started paying attention to it. A lot of the global money started paying, paying, paying attention to it. And they're saying uh, the people who really care and are who have a reason to care about making sure they don't lose their money are saying at a record rate, Trump is going to win this thing. Trump's going to win a lot of the swing states. Trump might even win the popular vote. The Senate was going to go Republican. The House, which everybody in the media was saying was going to stay Democratic, would actually go Republican. That's what started moving the money. And it so frightened and terrified them that they tried to go into poly market and manipulate it themselves and failed. And so then they started spinning this false tale that, you know, right wingers are manipulating the betting markets to try to create this false impression that Trump should have a lead. When every objective information source out there and historic and traditional predictive source out there, and even the media's own polling was forecasting a Trump victory. The Harris's own internal polling was forecasting a Trump victory. There, when you have Democratic Senate candidates in these swing states cutting ads, talking about how much they really are aligned with Trump, you don't have to be a genius to know what's happening in those states. But that's why, you know, the Biden administration weaponizing the legal system to suppress accurate information. It was like another form of censorship just by disguise, by not allowing ordinary Americans to put money where their mouth is about what they think is going to happen in the election. Thanks to Kalshi, the government lost. They went begging the higher courts to please intervene and stop this from going on for the next two weeks. They're not getting the higher courts to take debate as yet. And you see now why in the real world. It's another example of lawfare as a tool of suppression of dissent was prohibiting the availability of prediction and betting markets for the U.S. election. Hypothetically, Trump gets the popular vote, but what would, what would the numbers look like? Based on prior years, you had allegedly 81 million for Biden in 2020 to Trump's 73. What do the numbers 75. look like? Trump got 75. 75. So what, what do they look like in 2024 or, or are they expect it to look like? Well, it depends on turnout. So that you you could have Trump win the popular vote, but the he may not get more than 75 million votes if a whole bunch if there's just a, a lot fewer votes this time cast. And there's some reason to believe that may happen. So some there's some experts estimating only 145 million votes. This why election. would why would any expert be projecting that Trump votes would be Trump 
votes would be less than 2020. If anything, I, I would imagine people would be more the, stoked this year. Uh, they're estimating fewer people going to vote, period. Hmm. So that and, and that that will impact both sides. So that they're just estimating that the degree of turnout that happened in 2020, which was extraordinary, is not going to repeat itself. You're going to see a, a drop off, a decline in overall turnout. And some of that may be the ease with which people could vote by mail in voting. Typically in elections, the uh, enthusiasm has mattered in presidential elections because a lot of people who say they're going to vote just don't vote unless they're really intently committed to it. The issue was m whether mail-in voting made enthusiasm irrelevant because it was so easy. Mm. Everybody just went and did it. Now that it's not so easy, does everybody go and line up for two hours and vote? Uh, does everybody remember to do it? Maybe they say, think, oh, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow when it's a little bit better. You know, they never uh, get I'll around to it. I'm 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 going with X sub guy here. I don't think that's what's going to happen this year. I think turnout is going to be huge. I I think so as well. But I think a lot of people. Oh, it's are definitely going to be down overall, uh, at least so far. At least the, all the early voting data, mail-in voting data, public opinion uh, polling survey data suggests that we're not going to hit the the almost 160 million people that voted in 2020. And and our voting age population, our voting eligible population is large. So just the growth of the population, you would think we would go over buck 60. I thought we were going to hit, you know, uh somewhere around 155, 156. I thought it'd be down but not down a whole lot. It may be at 150 or below. Well, but now the question is you're right, who did it disproportionately hit? Remember those people who've died in the last 4 years. Right. So there's some Trump voters that literally are no longer around, probably several million. So in order to replace that, you need new voters who come into the election to replace that. You know, just people passing away takes a portion of the electorate out each year. And then the replacement voters determine and how many of those turn out. Maybe a bunch of the replacement voters don't vote, don't really care. And but maybe it disproportionately hurts Harris. Uh, that's where a lot of people are trying to decipher these early voting data mail-in voting data in states that have it, states that have a better history of that being predictive. Not all states do. Uh, so it's, always, it's a little bit of a tricky art. But from the preliminary data, it does look like fewer Americans will vote in this presidential election as a percentage of the voting eligible electorate than did in 2020. If I had to guess, though, I would, I would, I would bet that there'd be more than 75 million Trump voters this time around because I don't. It, back when they hit those numbers in 2020, I don't think Republicans were you know the, the the ones voting in by mail early because of it being easy so i i think there'll be more than 75 million uh trump votes this year if i had to bet i'm looking to see if there's a market for that but i don't think there is they, um, they don't have a specific number they just have i don't even have percentages they just have whether he'll win the popular vote or not get out and vote people